This is a continuation of the video on uh, specifications of a commercial string inverter and uh, in this part 2 we are going to focus on the performance specifications such as the inverter efficiency, the uh, total harmonic distortion, the power factor and the power density of the inverter. The inverter that we have been considering is a 3.8 kilowatt auto rated um, isolated um, string inverter it's rated for uh, 3.8 kilowatts at 240 volts voltage level uh, but it's a uh, slightly lower um, power 3.3 kilowatt at uh, 208 volts um, voltage level okay the first performance measure that we will look at is the power factor of the inverter at present all the string inverters they are they operate at uh, exactly unity power factor so as shown here the power factor of um, this particular product is very close to one now the inverters uh, the power injected by the inverters are limited by the current rating so the current rating for this uh, product is 16 amperes so the unity power factor operation ensures that we inject the maximum possible power for a given current rating and that is the reason why most inverters operate at uh, unity power factor even though the inverters uh, they are four quadrant devices and they are capable of operating at any other arbitrary power factor and this capability can be used to uh, provide uh, reactive power support or voltage support to the to the grid but at present the uh, standards uh, uh, like the IEEE 1547 do not allow the uh, string inverters to uh, actively take part in voltage regulation um, but in the near future it may become a standard feature for uh, the inverters to provide reactive power support and voltage support to the grid and uh, they can do so especially when they are not operating at the um, the full rated power under um, um, when the solar uh, irradiance is not up to the um, to the full rated value then um, a key performance metric is the THT the total harmonic distortion in the line current injected into the grid now any grid tied system will have um, standards restrictions on the uh, will have power quality requirements and um, for a PV string inverter connected at the distribution level the requirement is on the um, the distortion in the line current and um, it's usually uh, required to be less than the THG to be less than 5% and um, this restriction becomes uh, more and more stringent as the uh, penetration levels of the distributor generation or the PV uh, becomes uh, higher and higher in distribution systems the THT is the ratio of the harmonic content in the current waveform to its uh, fundamental component so a commonly used definition for a THT is um, THT equals um, let's say sigma n equals uh, from the second harmonic up to infinity um, i n squared um, and then square root of that divided by i1 so in this equation n is the uh, the number of the harmonic the order of the harmonic and i n is the rms value at rms value of the nth harmonic nth harmonic uh, content in the line current and i1 is the rms value of um, of the fundamental component okay so it's the ratio of the total harmonic um, um, content to the fundamental component in the line current and uh, for um, um, high frequency PV inverter the harmonic is really there is very little low frequency uh, component if the PWM is um, um, is well designed and if the uh, frequency modulation index is uh, reasonably um, high component then um, much of the harmonic distortion or much of the distortion is related to the switching frequency and its multiples the uh, the type of um, PWM method used uh, its design the uh, switching frequency and the uh, the output uh, filters whether it's a single L or an LCL filter together they determine the um, THG in the line current and um, uh, the design should make sure that the THG requirement 
um, uh, is met. So for this inverted design, the THT is given uh, to be less than 2%. Um, and another point to note is that the THT is uh, specified at the rated um, uh, full power. Now the uh, switching frequency content is independent of the magnitude of the fundamental component of the current. That is the switching frequency content is independent of the active power injected into the grid. So therefore uh, at um, lower power injection, let's say uh, power injection one half of the rated power under um, uh, lower solar irradiance uh, conditions. Then with the um, um, the high frequency content remaining, the numerator remaining fixed and the denominator coming down by a factor of two, um, the THT as a ratio becomes twice that of what is specified at the rated power. But that may not be a problem because um, what finally matters for the power quality of the distribution system is the absolute value of this harmonic uh, component and that does not increase with the reduced um, power injection so therefore uh, therefore it is okay from the power quality of the distribution system point of view another key performance metric for uh, PV inverters um, a metric by which uh, different manufacturers try to distinguish their product is the uh, power conversion efficiency of the inverter. So that is the ratio of the power injected to the grid to the power drawn from the PV panel. Um, usually the um, MPPD efficiency is not included as part of this uh, power conversion efficiency but that is also obviously a very important um, uh, performance measure. For this particular inverter, the efficiency is specified. Uh, the maximum peak efficiency at just one specific operating point is uh, as high as 96.9%. Uh, uh, now this is only at one point. The, uh, this plot shows the uh, efficiency at many different uh, operating conditions. So the y-axis is the efficiency in percentage going from 90%, it's, um, I think it can be read, so it's 90% uh, here up to 100% so and uh, the x-axis is the percent of the rated output power so the efficiencies are given starting from 10% of the rated power to the complete uh, rated power 100% and the three plots here they correspond to different um, DC voltages or different uh, PV voltages so the blue waveform corresponds to the lowest uh, 200 volts DC input the black is at 340 volts and um, the green is uh, 416 volts uh, DC. So this 96.9 percent efficiency is uh, only at this uh, one particular operating condition. So from the plot uh, it can be seen that uh, obviously the efficiency is not a constant. It uh, varies with the um, um, power injected to the grid. So therefore in order to um, uh, compare different inverters uh, a common metric is needed and uh, the metric used is the um, is the weighted average so the efficiencies at different um, power outputs they are given uh, different weights and the average of um, those efficiency uh, is the um, is a metric to compare with um, so one commonly used um, uh, definition or um, commonly used um, weighted average is this uh, CEC efficiency California Energy Commission efficiency and the definition of this um, I will introduce in the uh, next slide. So the CEC efficiency for this particular inverter is um, uh, 96 at the um, 208 volts uh, um, grid interface, 96.5 at uh, both 240 volts and 277 volts uh, levels. The manufacturers also specify the uh, power consumed under no load or standby conditions so which is uh, 8 watts for this uh, 3.8 kilowatt inverter uh, and also the power consumed when the inverter is completely switched off uh, during the night uh, so the nighttime consumption is as low as 0.6 watts for this uh, inverter okay so in this slide we look at the um, um, the standard weighted efficiency uh, that is used for PV inverters so the reason why we need this uh, weighted efficiency is that the uh, since the PV inverters operate at um, many different 
uh, operating conditions depending on the um, the solar insulation which um, in turn depends on the location uh, the time of the day season and other uh, environmental conditions like uh, cloudy days rainy days and so on so we need uh, a weighted average efficiency that considers many different um, solar conditions many different uh, power injection conditions and comes up with a common metric uh, with which we can compare different uh, uh, different inverters so the um, um, commonly used metric here is the uh, California Energy Commission average weighted efficiency and uh, in the Europe it is the European average weighted um, inverter efficiency okay then the uh, definition of the um, uh, average weighted efficiency is, uh, is given in this uh, equation so essentially the efficiency is measured at um, seven different um, power power points um, so it's measured at five percent of the rated power ten percent twenty percent all the way up to hundred percent rated power seven different measurements and for each of these um, measurements for each of these efficiencies um, a weight is given so, for example, if you look at the uh, CEC definition, which is what is um, um, more widely used in the U.S., it gives a very high weightage to the uh, efficiency at 75% of the rated power, because that is what um, that is where um, the inverters are operating uh, for much of uh, much of the duration. Uh, so, this is under uh, more of a high insulation condition, um, and uh, the weightage for um, lower power 5% and 10% is, is very small because um, uh, the energy uh, the energy captured under these operating conditions is uh, is is insignificant the weightage at um, uh, full 100% rated power is also rather low because um, the uh, inverter operates at full power uh, rather infrequently the uh, sum of these weights obviously should add add up to one. Um, so the final uh, weighted efficiency of the inverter is uh, simply the sum of um, each of these um, efficiencies at different uh, power levels scaled by their respective weights. So F1 is the weightage for the efficiency measured at 5% rated power. So F1 times uh, which in this case is zero for CEC efficiency times the um, um, measured efficiency at that power plus F2 which is 0 0.04 times the measured efficiency at 10% power and so on so that sum is the um, is called the CEC efficiency which can be used to compare different inverters so there is a, um, so there is an incentive for the uh, inverter manufacturers to optimize the design such that the uh, peak efficiency of the inverter occurs around uh, these power levels around 75 percent of the rated power and that is where the inverters is uh, expected to operate uh, for most of the uh, time periods okay this slide shows the mechanical specifications uh, but i include this under the uh, performance metrics uh, video because uh, this also shows the um, the power density of uh, of this particular inverter. Um, so the dimensions is given here and the weight is given here, and it looks like um, uh, both a 3.8 kilowatt rated inverter and a 4.6 kilowatt rated inverter. They are uh, built in the using the same mechanical uh, enclosure. So the dimension is the same for both the versions, and uh, looks like the weight is also quite similar for the two power ratings so uh, if you look at so the power density is usually given in terms of either the power per unit weight watts per kg or power per unit volume watts per cubic inch uh, so we can calculate both of them um, for the uh, 3.8 kilowatt inverter using this enclosure the uh, power density in terms of weight is 135.7 watts per kg whereas uh, for a 4.6 um, version it is um, uh, 164 watts per kg um, so I'm not shown here but the um, uh, power density in terms of watts per cubic inch can also be calculated uh, from this row uh, one thing that I want to highlight is that uh, these values correspond to um, a high frequency transformer isolated string inverter uh, if you look at the corresponding weight and uh, volume 
uh, specifications of a similar rated um, low frequency transformer based string inverter you'll see that the um, the power density is uh, significantly lower because of the weight and the size of the uh, 60 hertz transformer um, and on the on, on a similar note if we compare this with the uh, emerging transformer less type inverters uh, those numbers, those uh, metrics would be higher than the one that is shown here for a high frequency transformer isolated uh, type.